Hello, everyone. I am excited to introduce you to a new mini-series here at the Genomics Bootcamp channel, which I call in a short form, Simplify, Organize and Automate. These are a series of three short videos that might very well transform your Plink experience, especially when it comes to the powerful connection of Plink and R, or at least how you can, how you can uh, run these pro two programs together. This miniseries is also very interesting for me because as from my side also, it contains information and, and approaches that I will also implement in my workflows from now on. So as for the first part, which is called Simplify, it will show you how you can use only a single Plink executable file on your computer and use it for all your analyses, regardless where they are located uh, on the computer itself. So as for the first point, the things that I might have told you also on this channel, that Plink, the Plink executable, executable file must be in the same directory as the data. In this video, I will show that this must not be the case and also how to greatly simplify your script just after implementation of a simple trick. So first, let's see what happens in the conventional case. So I prepared a directory, which is called test directory, and this is just having the data inside and nothing else. So if you try to run this with the conventional case, you will get an error or at, well, nothing will happen, but it, the Plink will not run. That is because the Plink executable file is not in the same directory. Now, what you can also do is link in the Plink with the full path. So this is where the first part of the tricks comes in. So I created a directory which called genomic software and this has the ex executable file inside so i can link in the full path to this genomic software directory and plink in it to run plink in a successful way so now the plink command is actually replaced with the full path and for the purpose of this of this video I will try to ext extract just chromosome one. So that will be the, the run. But the thing is that you will see that the Plink program could be used from a completely different directory where the data is located. So we run this and you see that there is no error message here and that we have the new output files in the test directory together with the files, but the Plink itself is residing still in the genomics software directory. Okay, but uh, you might say that, hey, Gabor, this is even worse solution than before, because of course the path here, it's uh, quite short, but it could be much longer. And in fact, this path is also longer than it was before. And to this, I say, yes, you are right. But what you can do is you write your own small function, and I will show you how to do that. And this takes care of this problem and also takes care of a that problem that you basically you don't need to specify the system command anymore. So we are back here with some update uh, to the script and the crucial line is number line number nine here with the function statement. This is basically a new function that will run Plink from you from the desired directory. So if you don't know about functions too much, I will just guide you through this uh, in a quick way. For now, all you need to do is just copy and paste this line to the beginning of each of your scripts and you will be basically done with it. But anyway, so the function itself has a name. I, I, I called it uh, run plink, but you can call it whatever you want. One thing to take care of that the letters, so the capital and the small, smaller case letters matter. So whatever you defined here, it should be used also later on. So there is a func. this is a function, an R function with a single function argument, which I call Plink options here, and which is by default empty. And the whole function is really just to call the system command with the Plink executable file right now with the empty Plink options. So if we run this, we see that there is a, a new function appearing in our global environment. If we, and if we just run this in itself, you see this is just the empty Plink run. So that is basically telling that is, yes, it's running, but there is nothing in it. Okay, so to follow up, you need to specify the function name to run Plink. And then in the Plink options, 
you just need to put in everything that you would put otherwise after the plink uh, command. So just to make a bit of a difference from the previous run, so I extract chromosome two here and also with a different output file indeed to show that this works. And bam, the chromosome two is extracted. So, and just back to the test directory, you see chromosome two is extracted without Plink being actually in this directory. So with the same logic, you can use just one single Plink executable file throughout your entire computer and simplifying your life with using Plink just a little bit. This is also a new info for me. So I will be also implementing this approach, this simplified approach in my scripts from now on. So this is already the end of this video. I thank you for your time. If you find this video interesting, I just encourage you to share it with your friends and colleagues who also might benefit from this awesome approach. Also, there are two more parts in this mini series that are also worth watching. So I encourage you just to go further. But if you decide to stop here, then I just wish you a very nice continuation of the day.